Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Let's go to John in Orlando. Hey, John, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom, good afternoon to you. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I want to thank you, first of all, before I ask you about the saw, uh, you and the board and all the gang at DFNN. I had a really, really good year after the October call you guys made. My 401k is up 72%. Congratulations, man. A uh, couple of things I made with Coinbase and other stocks that I made, and I've had a good, good year. And we appreciate you growling and prowling with us, man. That's a beautiful thing. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This, of course, is the Tom O'Brien Show with TFNN. Let's take a look at what we got going on today. Honestly, kind of not a lot, right? You have some stuff in the news regarding the market, obviously big one being Intel and Amazon. Uh, but this market, in my opinion, is waiting uh, for what Powell's going to say tomorrow, right? So we're either dealing with a 25 or 50 basis point uh, rate cut I think a lot of people are pricing it. I mean, the bonds themselves are pricing in uh, 50, which is wild to me, right? I, I personally do not believe it's going to be 50. I, I think Powell has been extremely conservative. I've said this plenty of times, but he's been extremely conservative about this entire kind of thing. You still have somewhat strong economic data. I mean, coming out today, right? Retail sales, top Wall Street estimates in August. And, you know, let's let's talk about it, right? Because the retail sales rose 0.1% and economists had expected a 0.2% decrease. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty strong, right? I don't see where we get, a, a you know, 50 basis points. I, I don't think that makes much sense right now, but a lot of the market uh, seems to think so. I think one of the major issues, you know, you run and that pal runs with this is if you cut it too quickly, you're going to really... Um, you know, stimulate a lot of buyers, stimulate a lot of economic activity. And we're really not in the clear yet, right? And so you have this weird thing where retail sales are still pretty strong, right? I mean, as we see, increase about 0.1%. Uh, but you have some fears over the job market. So, I mean, we, I, as I said multiple times, I think we're in pretty new territory. It's always okay to look, you know, what things have happened in the past and, and how things have responded, uh, you know, certain inputs. But I, I think this is a little bit different. Um, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm betting on a 25 basis point, mainly because he kind of walked himself into it. I, I think if he hadn't done that, we probably would leave rates uh, unchanged. Of course, there is the lag, of course. And as we were talking about yesterday, you know, everything goes really swimmingly until it doesn't. And now you have a really big issue, and especially with jobs, right? It's far easier to lose jobs in the economy or new openings than it is to get those back. Uh, let's see what we got going on right now. The Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.17 percent. You have the composite of about 0.06 percent. It's pretty flat right now. The dollar flat as well at 191, kind of back up closer to 100 than it was yesterday, but not a big deal. Uh, crude oil still has some of the higher gains, trading at 71.41 as it is. The uh, E mini was futures out there trading down about 0.15 percent. The gold contract off slightly from yesterday. I think it closed around 2608. Trading at two thousand five hundred and ninety-five and ninety cents. Copper still holding pretty strong. Silver still holding pretty strong. Mike, if you're in the den, send me a silver mean man. This is going really well, at least in the metals. Russell futures up about 0.73%. Let's take a look if anything else is kind of interesting. Disney doing a little bit better. Okay, I'm happy looking at my personal portfolio. <laughs> We're trading at 9271. Uh, and then GE has really done so well this year. Um, obviously, they spun off a lot of their different stuff. This is uh, aerospace, so they're making all those engines, and it's doing uh, quite well for themselves. Boeing, having some interesting stuff. I guess tensions are getting a little bit hotter uh, at the uh, line with the strike. You had some security guards pulling weapons, and uh, the stock is in, in a rough position, I always uh, say. Let's talk a little bit right now. Well, first thing, I guess, some of the big news, right? Not too much to do with the market, but how about that? that Hezbollah attack, right? Um, they had the pagers. I was trying to look up how on earth that could have happened, right? Um, a lot of different ways. And what it seems like happened is they were using a certain kind of pager. Uh, I think it's called like gold Apollo or something like that. It uses lithium ion battery. 
Now, these batteries don't really tend to explode. They can, but under really high uh, amperage, which I think would be kind of hard to do. And of course, these kind of things communicate uh, via radios, which would make a little bit more sense. Uh, probably what Mossad is very good at doing is getting into the supply chain and propagating its stuff through there. Of course, that was kind of the assumed route of uh, how Stuxnet propagated through the Iranian uh, nuclear facility, the uranium enrichment facility. Uh, so it seems like Hezbollah basically bought bad and rigged uh, kind of pagers. Pretty nuts stuff in the news, and it makes you realize there's a lot of stuff that goes on in this world that I'm really uh, aware that people are capable of. Uh, very interesting stuff. That's why I always try to bring you uh, a little bit of news, at least in the realm of like cybersecurity or networking or something like that. Let's talk a little bit about Intel. So some good news for them. Still, you know, we're at 2149. Okay, what's the news? Basically, they're partnering even further with Amazon. Uh, Intel is going to spin off the foundry business. Again, that is still not profitable, um, but they are spinning it off, and uh, Amazon is going to have them uh, make some of the chips for them, which is pretty solid. These are going to be some 18A chips, and then um, some chips based off of uh, Intel 3, uh, which is really interesting. And we'll see if that can give us some money. Of course, the U.S. government also gave them more money as well. We spoke about that yesterday, about $3 billion that they're going to be. Uh, let's see if anything else. Yeah, Intel's laying off more than 15,000 people as part of its $10 billion cost reduction plan to regain financial stability following a second quarter net loss of $1.6 billion. Gelsinger says it's going to be good, but he's the CEO. Of course, he has to say it. Here's my thing. Like, that is good news, right? That is fantastic. You're still getting some more capital flowing in. Spinning off the foundry business, but we just looked at GE briefly, um, and they did the same thing, spinning off their aerospace from healthcare, and uh, they're doing super well. You still have a lot going on in this, right? And I really do think we're going to get some fluctuation, mainly around this $20 area. This is all good news, but nothing is realized yet in any capacity. And, I mean, you know, we're going up against this. And you have a bunch of people in these areas who are still holding onto it because they bought it too high. I think you could move anywhere up near this gap down, you're going to face some kind of basically selling, right? I don't think people want to stay in it uh, for too long. And uh, so while this is good news, like overall, right, like the company won't collapse or anything, um, I, I still think there's not a lot of, you know, spicy stuff going on. Uh, for this equity right now. And so I'm, I kind of take away from it uh, just to sit and watch and see what happens. Kind of interesting, right? I mean, I don't know. We can talk about Microsoft a little bit. This is some interesting news. One second. No. Well, Folks, stay right there. Some stuff with Microsoft. We have Basil Chapman up next. And of course, we are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle today. I know we're all looking forward uh, to hearing what he has to say on the markets and gold. So stay right there, and we will be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model? 
when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities. Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. C C call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. So the Tom O'Brien Show on TFNN. Uh, let's take a look over here at my screen. We're looking at the front page of TFNN.com. A lot of cool stuff coming to the site in uh, the coming months. Let's take a look over here, though, first at newsletters, okay? We have a bunch of really neat stuff. All right, again, check it out. We have 30-day money-back guarantee on all of our newsletters. But right now, the one I really want to put in the spotlight, as we do every Tuesday, is the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, this is what I'm going to say with this newsletter, right? Very thorough. You're going to get something on Saturday as well from Basil, which is a fantastic way to kind of end the prior week and begin the new one. And additionally to all this, once you subscribe to the opening call newsletter, you get access to these subscriber webinars that Basil Chapman has done. Now, the most recent one was July 3rd, and it's sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. Now, Listen, when I fill in on Tom, fill in for Tom, I'm always saying we have these new kind of phases coming in, right? And I've learned so much from Basil Chapman. I, you know, kind of audit a lot of these uh, webinars and they're just fantastic and I learned so much. So get in there, go ahead and subscribe. Again, that is a 30 day money back guarantee for if whatever reason it doesn't work out for you, I'm betting that it is going to. We are joined by Basil Chapman himself. Basil, how you doing? I'm doing well, Jacob. How are you? I'm doing well. Just getting into the new office, kind of enjoying all of it, seeing the uh, kind of breath holding the market's doing right now. Kind of curious of what you're looking at today. All right. Well, let me just start off with this. I, I'm showing this chart here, and it just basically says the Chapman Wave Notation. It's a very simple concept that I developed oh, a long time when I, when I used to hand chart with an engineering paper, pencil, and, and a ruler. So... Um, I identify a low bar, and then I want to see higher peaks. And as long as that low bar, the starting point isn't taken out, I numerate uh, with the alphabet sequentially, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, higher peaks, and the uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. But most importantly, if I get a buy signal that is upgraded to a buy mode, the implication is that there should be at least four higher peaks. It can go higher. It can recycle. It could. That, that's where you could have your deepest pullback. But D is your objective. It means that once I've titled it a buy mode, the implication is there should be a higher peak to peak, at least a fourth highest peak, peak D. So let's see what we've got. We've got... In the, I don't want to go through the, the uh, implications of other things that I discussed earlier about the a phantom peak. I've done that on my show, and if anyone's interested, today's show, I enumerated that. 
Um, it's, it's where there's a parallel high. But most importantly, we finally got today a leg D to the upside, and D is where other things can happen. You also see in the daily chart of the Dow a cup and handle formation. Not one of my favorite patterns. Why? Because when the handle breaks out to the upside, invariably, it comes back down and tests the, the handle part. So if you don't perfect the uh, turnaround at the bottom to be able to um, get the benefit of the move to the new recovery high, it's, you kind of, you're late to the party. Let's put it that way. Now, what's happening in the weekly chart? Well, lo and behold, this week we went to a leg D. What are the pink and green parallel uh, channel lines right here? That's what I call the inside track repellent zone. And we've gone to that D. It's just, it's underneath the pink line and it says this whole area must be monitored because that's where the price in this particular pattern keeps pulling back from. And if you look at the monthly chart, we've got a yellow circle here, which says is what I call an instant restart from a peak D. That's really important. And yet we are in lay E. And this is a chance that we could go quite a lot higher uh, because all the technicals are still positive. So on the very short term, once you get to a D, yellow light flashes for me. You don't have to go short, but this is where we're looking at to say, what do I do next? We have been long. We've been long. You can see right from here from the lows that were made back August the 5th. We've added to our um, three times long position. So we, we are looking at the Dow positively, but we're going to see what happens right here with the Fed and everything. So we've got the D Leg D the day before the Fed came up. But then we're also along the IWM, the Russell 2000. It's had a really nice move. It kind of stalled and it pulled back. And today just missed making a peak D, uh, a leg D, I'm sorry, from the high that was made back on the 26th of August at uh, 222.45. So far today's high is 221.80. So I'm watching this very closely to see if the small caps, there's the small caps iShares, IWM, if that can start a move that takes it to the 226 area. So I was just talking about this technique that I call the instant restart. And I'd mentioned this to you a little while back we were, uh, where you um, interviewed me. And I said, this is going to be a very good example of the instant restart, which occurs at a peak D, but certain things have to happen. This is a stock called Solventum Corporation, healthcare spin-off from Triple M, is trading at 71.93 today. It hit 73.40, um, and there was an instant restart right at the 200 period exponential moving average. And because it's gone this high after that D, now I can just continue the lettering going E. If there's another high, it becomes an F. And it's a slightly different thing. And I wanted to treat this for both subscribers and for folks who watch my show, the Target Conditions Hour at 10 every day, just to say, let's see what happens with this, if this is what kind of an example it is of that particular technique. So I thought I'd show that. Oh, I should mention that we're actually long from the 57s, and here it is at 71. So it's done very nicely. Um, and then something else I wanted to mention is if this, if after the Fed speak, the market is positive, we want to see the, the brokerage houses. We still along the IAI, which is the broker dealer right from the low uh, back in 2020. Um, so it's done extremely well. But on the shorter term, we've, we went long Robin Hood markets. Uh, this is one of the reasons I wanted this is because I love the brokerage area if the market goes higher because that's where people come into the market. But Robin is a little unconventional. It isn't your usual. It isn't like Merrill Lynch or uh, it's, it's you know a, a Morgan Stanley a, a brokerage like that. This is a little different because it has to do with gold. It has to do with the brokerage area. So we went long off the low that was made back on the uh, August the 5th. And we're still long in the trading now for, at, at 22. We're long in about, I think, in the 16s. It's so at 22.54. And this one had a, a very big cup formation that went to a D and then started a new move to the upside, which I'm calling an E, but it's stalling right at the 200 period moving average. So if the market acts negatively to the, to the Fed by Friday's close, probably you'll see um, Robin Hood. H-U-O-D is a symbol, it's at 2255 right now, somewhere in the low 20s. If the market is favorable 
I think you can see the 24s, but so far it's holding extremely well. It's doing very nicely. And you were talking about, I, I happen to concur, I agree with you, that uh, Powell is rather conservative in his way of looking at it. He actually was very much, he was a Goldman Sachs ass. He understands the market very well. I think, I, I'm with you. I think that he's not going to the 50. It'll, he'll talk about it, but I don't think he'll go yet. He doesn't need to go yet. I think the quarter point and we'll see how the market responds to that. Absolutely. Basil, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Thank you. Folks, go get yourself the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman and stay right there because we have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle on next. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rose is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. What is going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We were just joined by Basil Chapman of the opening call newsletter. Of course, he has the Tiger Technicians Hour as well. That is his live stream at 10 a.m. Eastern Time right here on TFNN. Uh, now, 
We're going to shift gears a little bit here, but still focus on some pretty solid and great analysis. And if you look over here, we at the screen, we have the ord oracle.com. Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, we are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, we've all come to love his analysis on it, and we're looking forward to hearing what he has to say today, especially in uh, the shadow of tomorrow with kind of the Fed decision. Tim, how are you doing? Good. Uh, first time learning curve here. We're on uh, Skype, so uh, that's right. We're doing a little transition. That's right. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm not real good at it, but I'll, I'll figure it out as we go forward. So, totally. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's jump to it. You yeah, well, I got chart one up for whenever you are ready to go. All right. Well, anyhow, I, I got uh, on the chart. I have some. Uh, shaded uh, pink areas and i only want to point out that is the shade pink areas i have numbers on top of it, it says 10 days seven days seven days whatever um, actually uh, those you get that many days up in a row anyway anything seven and beyond usually you're near some sort of a lease of consolidation if not a reversal in the market and that's the reason why i want to point this out and actually, I have eight days up in a row going into today. That's not the case. Uh, it's actually seven days. And the market right now is just off a little bit. It should be actually six days. But either way, we're up against some previous highs of, of July and actually August there. We actually touched a new high today, all-time high. Yep. And uh, if you notice, you go down to the bottom window, uh, this this little indicator works really well, especially going into highs. Not so well at bottoms. Sometimes it does okay, sometimes it doesn't. But on tops, most of the cases when the SPX or SPY in this case makes higher highs and the SPY VIX ratio makes lower highs, usually that's the divergence. And I got some red arrows on those charts showing times when the SPs made higher highs, this ratio made lower highs. And nine out of ten times, you're going into some sort of at least a consolidation type high. Mm -hmm. And if you notice in the current time frame, you know, we, we broke above the August high. And that ratio, which is the bottom window again, made a lower high. And over the last couple of three days, the SPs made a higher high and this ratio made a lower high. So on a short term basis and actually on a weekly basis, you got a divergence. And so, again, we've been up. Well, we're down right now. So it's six days in a row. When I made that chart, it was seven days in a row. So the FOMC meeting, a lot of times you go into news announcements, you rally into them, a lot of times you decline out of them. Yeah. If you decline into them, you rally out of them. This particular case, it, it may hold up until Wednesday, maybe even Thursday, but we're probably going to at least see some um, sort of a pullback. So I sold, uh, I was long on the S&Ps, I think it was August 6th, I got out last Friday. Mm -hmm. and. So far, I'm remaining out. I don't see a good trade here set up, especially with news setting right in front of us. So let's, let's go to chart two. Look yeah, absolutely. All right, I'm pulling up chart two right now. We should be good to go. All right. So this is a monthly chart. Now it looks at the little bit bigger picture. And we started getting uh, the bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio, which is similar to the SPY VIX ratio. But on a monthly chart, it seems to work a little bit better. But if you notice, you're going into June, July, the S&P's made higher highs, and this ratio made lower highs. And that's what predicted the market's probably going to in, in, enter into a uh, kind of summer, what I call the summer doldrums. And we're into it right now. And it's not over yet, too, because if you notice, that ratio made a lower low, and the S&P's are still set close to its highs. So on a bigger time frame, we may actually pull back to the previous low, of the last month, which is around that 5250 range, which uh, is just, you know, on a bigger time frame, it's just a small trading range before the market moves higher. On a short term time, ra time range, that's a pretty big pullback. Yeah. And I, I don't know if we'll get to 52 or 50 not, but let's go to chart three a little bit. Sure. Kind of, kind of just skipping back and forth. Yeah. But anyhow, the monthly chart suggests we could pull back to 52.50, which is basically the last month's low, which on this chart would be the August low. Um, may go back there, but 
this is a kind of a blown up chart of chart one, but I took all the noise off. And you can see a little bit better what's going on. The top window is the SPY, SPY VIX ratio. And you can clearly see that ratio has made lower highs as the SPs made higher highs. And always, there's no accident in the market. If a market can't hold above its previous highs, it will reverse and, take, and attempt to take out the previous lows. Well, the previous lows is 540, which is basically the uh, uh, low of September uh, Roughly six, eight. I think yeah. It, okay. Yeah, right. Right. Around that five forty. So I'm thinking on a short term basis, that's where we're going to head to. Um, probably by the end of the month. I don't know how this thing's going to work out. So, you know, the market volatility is probably going to pick up here pretty quick. Definitely going to the FOMC meeting because the good news is already in there. Are they going to cut a quarter point or a half point? I really don't know. Really don't care. Uh, but that's already baked into the market. And so the market's going to react to that. So right. and I that, think at a minimum, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you and you bring up a great point as well, right? But the past few, you know, kind of releases we've had from the Fed, it was something the market anticipated, right? And so you have a little bit of movement up like prior to it, and then you see a little bit of a pullback as well. I think too, and now I know we're looking at technicals on this, but if I could just, you know, interject some of the, you know, kind of general market news with it, you know, if this doesn't do you know, 50 basis points, right? And it's only 25. I think that volatility gets even higher as well. And, you know, I mean, seeing a pullback, you know, 2540 makes total sense, especially looking at, you know, the te technicals that we have right here. So, yeah. Yeah. So at minimum, I think we're going to have four, 540. But on the monthly chart, you know, we, we could possibly see the August low. So I don't know. We may find, you know, support. Depends how the decline goes. You know, I'm a I'm big you know, fear in the market is, is actually a bullish sign. It depends yeah. how much fear we have on this next pullback. And I'll define the fear by the trend readings on the close. So we may see skyrocketing, you know, uh, trend readings, you know, 1.2 and higher on the pullback. If that happens, then probably the 540 will be support. But if the market kind of pulls back and that trend stays fairly neutral. I see. Then that, then that opens the door all the way down to, you know, on, on the SPY, but down to the 510 area. So, totally. but wait and see. Hear the music. Yep, Tim, so. stay right there. Uh, folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle after a short break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien! Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Now, I want to say as well, you're taking a look over at TFNN a little bit earlier in the newsletters tab. Let's take a switch over here to services, right? And you hear Tim talk about bottoms and tops and everything like that. And it's kind of a question, you know, how do I sit there and read a chart and be able to kind of see those same things that Tim sees? Well, if you look over on the services tab, we have right down here, this is going to be the second row, uh, second and third column. We have the secret signs of market tops with Tim Ord, and then also six secret ratios every trader should know with Tim Ord. And uh, he talks about these, you know, everything included, <laughs> honestly, in these webinars uh, every time he's on the show. Uh, and it, it helps greatly to be able to understand and see these kind of indicators and then make informed uh, decisions, particularly around times uh, like this. So, Tim, before we went to the break, we were kind of looking at the spy charts, a potential pullback to 540, depending on the fear level at that. You know, we either find resistance or support, excuse me, at 540, uh, or we go down further to the August lows. Right. So, you know, the, the whole key is if this, you know, I'm saying, I don't know when this, I think this decline, this potential pullback, I'll put it this way, will start before the week is out. Uh, I don't know what today, you know, today is pre announcement you know that i think tomorrow they announced it at two o'clock eastern and so that probably gets some volatility in the market it may take a day for you know traders to think about it but probably before the week's out i think the market will start to decline and again what's important on this you know if it's a potential pullback if it does happen uh what the trend readings will be so that's how you define if that 540 is going to be a support area is how high that trend gets on a you know on a five day a ten day uh, or a three day depends you know how the big the how big that trend gets that will determine if that 540 will be support put it this way if the ten day trend gets up around 1.2 or higher that'll suggest that 540 will be support I see but if it stays close to around one then that's kind of a no call, uh, but most likely we're probably going to go deeper until that trend does get above 1.2 or 1.2. The higher above, the higher above 1.2 it is, the more bullish that reading becomes. So the more fear in the market, the higher that reading will go. And the more fear of the market, the next strongest that actually puts energy to the next rally. So fear is a good thing. Everybody's afraid of fear. You really want to. Uh, be a company to fear. Fear is a good thing in the market. If you don't have any fear, that's when you should fear because the market <laughs> is going to keep going down until fear develops. Right. So, uh, so anyhow, just want to push that no, in. No, fantastic. But, and, and again, like, guys, check out the webinars that Tim has because it goes so in-depth on it. And uh, honestly, it's, it's pretty crazy how spot-on this kind of stuff can be. So, yeah, anyways, Tim, uh, do you want to move right. on here? We have, I think the yeah. gold is up next, huh? Yeah, gold is up next. This is kind of unusual. Uh, on, uh, yeah, let's see, uh, September 9th, okay, the the second window down from the top is the uh, inflation-deflation ratio on a daily basis. And the top window is the RSI for that ratio. And when the RSI of that ratio gets below 
thirty. It's usually a, a bullish sign for the market, and all of those red lines across the chart show the times when the RSI of this ratio got below thirty. And on September 9th, <coughs> let me get a drink here. On September 9th, the RSI got to 28.39, so that was bottom. Pretty much picked out the low. Uh, so it, it really, so anyhow, a minimum on, on when this uh, indicator <coughs> triggers is usually at least a month. Of, of a signal so sometimes it can be longer but it's usually at least a month so it's triggered on uh, September 9th that would imply this rally should go at a minimum October 9th so let's kind of look at the internal so it actually is this indicator or other indicators on the gold market are also on a monthly and a, a weekly buy signal I didn't show those two indicators but uh, this rally in general uh, according to the monthly and weekly uh, chart, suggests this rally should last about a year and a half. The first, the weeklies were triggered back in March of 2000 or uh, 2024 this year, and the monthly is triggered in uh, May of the, this year. So at minimum, we should go into late next year. Uh, but this, <coughs> oh, my, <coughs> that's getting dry here, man. <laughs> No, it's just amazing to see. I mean, because you've been calling some movement up as well in gold uh, for quite a while. If you take a look over here, I'm looking at my thinkorswim right now. But I mean, obviously, we all, we've all seen it, right? I mean, gold has just taken off recently. This has been a great year for gold. You had a little bit of stalling, you know, in the middle of the year, but, but really a nice march forward with some pretty strong movements up. So, I mean, this, again, has been, you know, just such a solid analysis as well. From the right. beginning of this, so yeah, this these are actually gold stocks. Um, so I, I'm the thinking like gold, itself, right? Right, and uh, and most of these gold stocks, you know, they've been dormant uh, or yep. lackluster for years. And I, I'm thinking these all of these stocks are going to come alive here. So all of these penny stocks are going to turn into ten, twenty dollars at some point, probably over the next year or two. Well, and you've seen it happen too with like you know, for instance, I mean, Harmony went up. Now Harmony had some bad earnings, so it kind of came down. Ford guidance was strong, but I mean, Vista Gold, for instance, woke up a lot. Um, you're having some, yeah, a lot of movement in the GDX, I guess. Like you can see with the chart as well. But I mean, it's been fantastic for some of these as well. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, like already. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it is, it's going to get a lot better. Yeah. Uh, well, anyhow, let's, just, let's take a look at internals of the market, which is on uh, chart five. Perfect. Uh, the top window is a bullish percent index for the gold miners index. So this is another uh, gold miners index, another like ETF, like GDX, and looks inside of what those stocks are doing. And so it's a, it's a point and figure buy signal. In other words, the stocks in the gold miners index <coughs> right now 85 percent of them are on are on buy signals yeah so so that's over three quarters of the but well it's 85 percent so almost all of the stocks in gold miners index are on buy signals point figure buy signals and i marked the times in the past when this indicator is above 60. <coughs> if you look excuse me if you look on the gdx chart it's, which is all that uh, kind of a shaded green area yeah. is when those those rallies occur. So as long as that stays above 0. 0.60, this area will stay in green. And that's what happens in major in the major rallies of of uh, GDX, uh, the bullish percent index for the gold miners index stays above 60, and this index still keeps going up. So this is kind of the, not even a topping area. Uh, so how long is it going to last? I think it's going to last, again, well into late next year. So I think we have a minimum of a year for this rally to happen or to keep going. You'll see some consolidations along the way. But in general, each consolidation will be a higher low than the previous low, and each high higher will be above the previous high. Yeah. So uh, And normally at the end of these moves, you get the parabolic move, and I think we're still a long ways from that. I hear the music. Yeah, Tim, stay right so. there. We have a short segment up next, but we still got a chart to go over, and I know we would all uh, love to hear uh, your thoughts on it. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle talking about uh, gold miners.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show on TFNN. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We are looking at the gold miners, some potential movements for them going forward. We have a short segment here. Tim, we're looking at chart six right now. Indicator. The bottom window is the GDX up, down volume percent. And the next window up is the GDX advanced decline. Uh, but what works best I ran studies in the past is the up down volume that pretty much dictates what direction GDX is going to go. And what this uh, is is a 50 day average of the up down volume. So it measures the up and down volume and take a 50 day average of it. As long as this indicator is above zero, uptrend in GDX is in force. And all that light colored uh, green area, shaded green area going to pass is when that indicator is above zero and we started above zero about first part of april i mean the bottom was in, in march uh but it, it really since it's a 50-day average it lags a little bit but we've been basically above april starting end of march first of april and we're still above zero as of today we're plus 10.94 <clears throat> and so if the market was kind of heading up this indicator is close to zero or below zero that would tell you, you know, the rally is ending and a, a pullback is beginning. But according to this chart, it's not even a pullback uh, setting up here. 
because we're not even close to zero. We're actually even uh, increased here a little bit. Right. So on a short-term basis here, this indicator just looks fine. There's there's no hesitation. So I still think, uh, according to this chart, we're still going to move higher. It's probably going to look similar to that long period we had back in 2019 and 2000, first part of 2020. That pretty much this indicator stayed above zero for 16 months. So I'm thinking we're going to do something similar here. Fantastic. Tim, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, of course, we're going to see you Thursday as well. So we hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Folks, thank you so much for joining us. That was Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Go check him out at ord-oracle.com. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to be covering everything to do with the Fed. So make sure you tune in. We'll see you then.